Okay, here we are. Same bat time, same bat channel. All right, let's get to work. The original video was three and a half hours. We are going to speed things up to less than 20 minutes. Let's get right to it. Okay, so I have Keith here with me, and Keith is going to set up a traditional containment, and um, Keith is going to be talking about why he chose to do it this way, because what we're doing here is we're going to show you how fast it is to use air wall systems compared to traditional ways, right? Like setting up poly sheeting like he's doing here, and why he's using the, the type of system he's about to use here. Go ahead, Keith. Yeah, so basically, um, you know, obviously the whole goal here was to show the contrast. You know, what does it take in terms of time and, and materials and everything else versus the air wall system? And the air wall system uh, is so effective that I didn't, I wasn't confident that I could make something with zip poles that would uh, compete. Uh, you can see I'm using zip poles here to help temporarily support things as I put it in. But I went with the pressure, uh, the timber system, because it was the only way I felt that you could guarantee that uh, a day or two later, you wouldn't come in and find the, you know, the containment down, even though this particular containment didn't have to stay up that long. Um, but it was also the only way that I was going to be able to make sure that I was going to get the seal that would compare to what I did the next day when I demonstrated our product. And by that, I mean, by using the timbers around the entire building, the entire room, um, it allowed me to staple and tape everywhere and make sure that no air was getting passed. I at no point wanted someone, uh, as I compared mine to this, to say, well, you know, you sandbagged it. You, you didn't do a, you know, you built it cheaply or, or quickly out of, out of zip poles. And of course, they're not going to hold as much negative pressure. And of course, you know, so I, I was very conscious of that. I wanted to make sure that um, if anything, I was accused of overbuilding it um, as opposed to, you know, sandbagging it and, and purposely making that system look inferior. Uh, so yeah, I spent we, a lot of time making sure that it was, to, it was right. We used to use PVC pipe that we put together, right? Like sort of like what you're doing here, because same reason I didn't just trust um, the zip zip wall poles, right? And, you know, we would use duct tape and we would staple things and, you know, to try to make sure, because what happens is when, when you're doing, especially when you're doing commercial work and um, you have all of these employees in there and everybody's looking to figure out how to make some money, right? Like if this thing came down, now we're getting sued because we made everybody sick all even though they were all still working in the same office that had mold before we even showed up. But all of a sudden, when you put a containment up, even before you start working, if it fell down, now they got sick. And our question for them was always, well, you weren't sick while you were working in it. It's the same mold, right? But now we're responsible, right? So I was always also conscious of the fact that we had to build things really, really tight and not just use um, zip wall. Now, look, Keith, you and I both know 90% of the contractors out there just throw something up. They throw some poles up there. They're not even taping. I can't tell you how many jobs I've been on where it's not even taped. It's not, it's not even, it's not really even a containment. It just looks like somebody threw some plastic up, right? It's containment theater. You yeah, know, that's right. Theater. That's a great way to say it. I yeah. love what you did here. About yeah, I um I was quite proud of it too. Actually, it came out. It was it was solid. It it, it held extremely well, and and I was proud of the of the result. Um, and you know, I I take pride in everything I do, even if I'm doing even if I'm doing it the old way. You know, I wanted to make sure that I did a good job, and that because I'm going to have you know I have a lot of relationships with trainers at and academies that are teaching the industry, how to do mold, which, you know, as we all know, isn't really federally regulated, at least yeah. some states do, but um, you know, this, this would be good for an asbestos job too, something that uh, is regulated and there are really strict uh, regulations on, on how it's supposed to be done. So I didn't want to at any point have one, someone say, man, you, uh, you didn't do a very good job there, you know? So it was important to me to get it right. 
you know, even though there wasn't actual mold in this situation or asbestos. Yeah. And so basically I was looking at your doorway here where you're going to put your zipper on, right? The, right. The, where you open it up and cut it and everything. And you have your boards closer together there. And I know the reason why you did that. Tell, talk about that a little bit. Uh, I just wanted to stabilize the, um, the, 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 the high traffic zone, right? I wanted, and I also wanted to make sure that there was less play in the plastic since I went with, you know, the one zipper, which a lot of guys do. I didn't want to do a curve. It makes the opening too small. Yeah. Um, but, you know, by, by doing this, that meant that even when the zipper was open, the plastic was still very close and, 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 you know, you're, you're not going to have as much, uh, loss in containment by doing that's exactly that. what i thought that's exactly yeah. what i thought you were doing to make it much stronger where you're walking in and out right right instead of right. wider and you know when you're looking at it on the film until you actually walk through um i thought i was like well do you got to go in there sideways but it's it's all vi it's on the video you're walking straight through that thing so it's plenty wide enough it's oh absolutely yeah because i can see you and dude you are quick <laughs> you are not messing around here. No, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't even take a bathroom break. I, again, I, I know I'm being judged here, right? So I knew that, you know, if I, if I, uh, if I deliberately took too long, or I would be like, oh, of course, you know, you sandbagged it. No, no, I want to make sure that I was, uh, I was working the whole time, and it was a solid three and a half hours going between the driveway where I was doing the cutting and, and in here where I was doing the construction. Well, and I understand how, how important this is. And I know when you're cutting boards like this and you're cutting them for this particular room, um, it, that does take time, even, you know, and it is when you're doing it this way, it, it almost, you know, two people, it doesn't even matter because it, it, you know, this is a one person job the way you're doing it. And I don't know where a second person would come in handy other than taping while you're doing something and save you a little time. And that's something else, man. You start getting that duct tape on wood floors that leaves that residue. You got to get the residue up. I mean, I've done so many of these owning a restoration company for 27 years. I can't tell you how many times, um, you know, we were getting that glue from the tape off the wood floors that were, you know, perfect when we went in there. Well, and that's why, and that's a, that's, that is, you know, one of the reasons that I chose this, this um, compression timber setup is because I'm not relying on the tape to hold anything. I understand. Right. It's just closing the gap. It's working like temporary caulking, which is why I'm able to put blue tape on the ground and on the ceiling because it's not, we're not working on that. That's not holding everything in. And you know, what's funny on that, on that bit is, uh, well, not funny at all, actually, because it's still on my ceiling, is the, the blue tape pulled the texture off. <laughs> I mean, it was only up there for a few hours, and I went and pulled my blue tape down, and it pulled off a piece the size of a credit card, and I just couldn't believe it. I was like, ah, you know, it's just one more example of why the old way of doing things is just the old way of doing things. You know, it needs to be done better. Yeah, so I saw, in fact, I um, we're, we're recording this right now, as you all know, but you saw that I put that picture up went right when Keith was mentioning how he pulled drywall off of his wall. That's what it looked like. I put that just up on the screen here for you all. Yeah, and you can, and one thing, I, you know, once again, on that whole trying to be as fast as possible, but also deliberate, you know, I mean, I went so far as, you know, I, was, I thought about, I give a lot of thought of this. I want to make sure that I'm doing it right, not making it look harder than it is, whatever else. I, I used the window to bring the stuff in from outside instead of walking all the way around through the house, which could have added time. And, you know, I could have pumped up the number. I was like, no, I'm going to be as efficient. I'm, this is me on a job site. I'm not doing this for a demo. I'm building containment for a job. And this is how I would do it to be as efficient as possible. So I love the way you use, remember I was talking about when we used to do this, we used to use PVC, even when we did the, all the framing right? and we would make it like, I don't know, eighth of an inch or something bigger. And then you'd lift it up because we would build it and we would lift it up and then we would use rubber mallets to put it in place, but mm. we would put our plastic, our plastic would come over the top of it and, and you know, we would push it up there and it would, it would be pretty tight, but I love the, the, uh, the box that you're building to walk through, um, to get into the contained area when you're done. 
Yeah, I think that's a, you know, that's something that a lot of contractors are doing. And, you know, I, you know, I've, I've been able to uh, attend some AMRT classes, although yeah. my own certification won't happen until January. I'm going to get AMRT certified. I think that's a, a wise thing. I, I always learn something when I talk to these guys and, but I've sat in on some AMRT classes and this is how they do it. And, yes. you know, keeping that PVC frame in the truck is something that a lot of people do. And so I wanted to, I was trying to really do this as true to, as, as true to the real world as possible, even though I'm, I acknowledge and I know, and we all know that a lot of contractors aren't doing it this thoroughly, unfortunately. Not, not even close. Yeah. So, and so I love what you're doing here, right? Cause it is fast when you use PVC pipe to build your, your walk through here, your box, and then you're going to put a zipper on, on this thing, right? right. And on your, on both sides. Yeah. Um, cause there's one, yeah, because you was the back end. The back end was filled in also, right? Oh yeah, okay. No, I I only put I only put two zippers in the whole thing. So we got one zipper here getting you into the doffing chamber, and then the other zipper uh, is that second. Uh, I see. I yeah. See. So I didn't. I didn't. This isn't a two side. This cube right here is only well five sided, but three sided. The back side is cut out. I see. I see. Yeah. But then I attached it to the. Oh my gosh! Wait until you all see his other video if you haven't already watched it, where he's using his air wall system and how fast and how easy the box is and it, it and how much better it looks. Now this this um, this containment is is probably better built than 99% of the containments out there. No, no doubt. I've been on thousands of jobs. I've seen it. Um, and I've even been guilty of like shoddy containment. You know, you get into these jobs and all right, no one's there, right? It's no big deal. Let's just set up some plastic. We've all done it. All of us have done it, right? Especially, you know, we live in a world now where you're bidding against all these people that think they know how to do mold now, right? That, because you're, there's all these states where it's not regulated, so it doesn't matter. The, the painter's doing it, the plumber's doing it, the drywall person's doing it, right? Everybody's doing it, and you're bidding against all these, these contractors that have no clue how to do it correctly, they don't even know what um, an air scrubber is, negative air machine, right? They don't even know what that is. How about a manometer? There's a good one. Oh, my the God. Word that's uh, um, I've always said a manometer. They need to change that name because it's kind of, it's even. It's, hard to say. <laughs> well, it, it's, it doesn't even feel right. It feels like French. <laughs> like, like we talked about this before, right? But yeah, like, and yeah, listen, nobody uses a, a manometer. They use the, yep, it's sucking in. Yep. <laughs> right. Yep. I mm -hmm. can see it sucking in. Mm -hmm. And when when you really get some pressure on that thing and you don't have it built like you have right here, it, it's going to it falls down. Mm -hmm. um, I'm My own company is guilty of it. When you have a large company, and you have a lot of employees. Right. You, you can't control everything all the time. You can have meetings. You can talk about the right way of doing things. I love the way you're setting up the, your window unit, your um, where you're going to exhaust. In fact, um, I've, ne I've never seen it done this way. And I was like, oh, my God, I wish I would have known about this years ago. Um, because we would take a board and put it in the window that had the hole in it, right? To, mm -hmm. to get your, uh, your lay flat through, or your, you know, you're going to use, um, some, you're going to use that lay flat right there, but PVC, yeah. Uh, P, yeah, but, um, I love the way you actually did this and, um, your other video kind of shows the other board that's between these right here. Yeah. This a little video better doesn't does show here. that. Yeah. Because I was trying to figure out what is he doing, um, right? I was trying to figure out exactly what was going on here. Right. And then when I saw the video of your air wall, I saw how you put that that window unit together at that point. Right. So, and there you are, you're cutting your hole. Yep. Right. Yep. Right. I'm to make sure it was a nice tight fit. Yep. You're doing that. You're taping it. I'm sure you're like we used to do. Um, Oh man, there's such a better way to do this. This is this is a there's your manometer. You're setting that up so we can see what what kind of um, um, pressure we're going to have here. I love I love what you've done here. Now Thanks, I've slowed it down here. Oh, there it is. There's where you have the board yeah. in between these two things, dude. This is that's that's genius. <laughs> I love it. So talk a little bit about this. 
So, you know, this is actually, this is a, this is called a, a magnahelic, but it, it's a manometer by any other name. And basically you're seeing here that we're pulling, you know, 0 0.06 uh, inches of water and just a little more than, and uh, 0 0.02 is the minimum, 0 0.05 is the ideal. Um, that way when you do the zippers and stuff, you're not losing everything. You have some hope of maintaining some ne negative containment, which again was why I use these single zippers that stay pretty close. Yes. And I want to point out that, you know, this isn't an actual remediation job, clearly. Um, and, uh, you know, we should have makeup air and things like that. But for expediency and because of the way I was setting it up, um, I just chose to get my makeup air from the fireplace, which is open behind it. So I just want to point out the fact that I've got an entire chimney supplying my makeup air right now, and I'm still yeah. pulling 0 0.06 inches of water. That's a yeah. lot of a lot of negative. Because with a you set hole. it up so, so um, tight, it, it's um your pressure is really really well it's doing really well right, right. It's really um this is a great job the, you know those of you that are that don't own the air wall system yet if you're still doing it um old school like this this is how you're supposed to set up a containment look at how look at how good that looks right there of course of course if he was going to work in this room, he would give himself a little more room. I think it looks like <laughs> probably would. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. is just for show to set it up. Right. Like you'd yeah. want like another couple of feet or something, but you, yeah. you really, you can see it right there. It's tight. Oh yeah. I yeah. love and I, it. And I, and I made a point of coming back out and, and, you know, and, and checking it again. Right. You know, make sure nothing changed. Right. So I want to say something before the video ends. We only have 51 seconds left on this, but um, the difference is this took three and a half hours for one person. When he sets up his system, it's like 45 minutes for the same system. And it looks so much better. Thank you so much uh, for um, helping us out and talking about this. You look yeah, tired, thanks for, dude. Thanks, man. All right. Thank you.